functional exercise is our topic of the night. This is my favorite topic by far. It is just so important. So we're going to go over an intro and talk about different types of exercises. And then we're also going to um, practice. Well, I'm going to demonstrate functional exercise and then also talk about getting access. So as an introduction, I just wanted to share with you that these questions are the most common questions that I get. I'm sure you guys have all asked these of your physical therapists before, but these are the questions I get on a daily basis. What exercises do I do? Of those exercises, how many repetitions should I do? How many sets should I do? How long should I hold it for? What should the quality be like? And these are all amazing questions. You should be asking these questions to your healthcare team. And especially in this case, your physical therapist or physiotherapist based on where you're joining in from. So we're going to be going over all of these. Um, oh, Sandra says suggestions for getting in and out of the bathtub. Awesome, we can definitely review that. So it is first most important to know what the definition of functional exercise is. So functional exercise means exercises to improve function and function meaning your day-to-day -day activities, things like getting out of bed, getting into bed, showering, climbing stairs, sitting down without plopping, standing up from the sofa, getting down to the floor, uh, doing laundry, walking, these day-to-day -day things that a lot of people take for granted. And I would like to know in the chat, let me scroll over here. I'd like to know in the chat if you are someone who has ever said this, the phrase that's on this slide, where you say, I feel stronger, but my walking isn't any easier. Or I feel stronger, but stairs are still really challenging. Or I feel stronger, but getting into bed or out of bed is still so hard or I'm stronger but getting in and out of the car is really challenging or maybe it's not strength maybe it's balance I feel like I have better balance but I'm still falling or I have better balance but walking is still really hard let me know if you guys have said this so Mary Lucia says yes Desiree says I have I want to know how common this it's common that I hear this but I just want to know for the group of people on this call live if it, this is something that you have said Meta, yep, Michael, Holly, Rebecca, Kathy, Mary Lou, I'm strong, but my balance has gotten worse. Yeah, and balance, by the way, is completely different. Balance is a separate category from strength. So keep that in mind too. Um, Mary says, yes, Julio says, I have many times. Desiree, have excellent strength, but my balance is off, yes. Peggy says yes, Janet says yes, my balance is off more lately. Okay, so we got a bunch of yeses. So you guys um, listen up to, the, to this presentation. I'm glad that you decided to join live. Deborah says I keep getting stronger every day because I make myself stronger every day. I love that, or actually, sorry, that's Lynn that says that. Um, upper body, okay, awesome. So there is a reason for that. If you feel stronger, but your function is still the same, your function didn't also improve even though your strength improved, that means your exercises are not functional. Now I can get off on a soapbox on how functional exercise is the best, but the reality is they're both good. Regular exercise and functional exercise are equally important. It totally depends on what your goals are. If your goal is just to get stronger, then regular exercise is great. But if your goal is to improve function, you have to be incorporating functional exercise. So I'm going to show you two of my favorite examples and two of the examples that are easiest to show you in this room. So before I show you those, I just want you to know that functional exercise and what that can mean for you personally, it's based on what activities are hard for you to do. And also, what are your goals? So I would actually encourage you while we're on this call to make a list, write them down of the things, the activities, the day-to-day -day movements that are challenging for you to do and or the day-to-day -day movements that you just want to be easier. Even if they're not that hard for you, but you want it to be an easier transition or you want to feel stronger while doing that, that counts. So write down all of those things, and maybe it's just one thing, or maybe it's 10 things. It's totally up to you, but that is going to be your guide. Pick one, and you break that down 
into as many exercises as you can. And then those are your exercises. So I'm gonna demonstrate standing up. Yeah, and then we'll do walking, but let me go back here first. So I'm gonna stop sharing the screen for a second. And you should just see me now. So Rhonda says, after walking too much. Yep, Sharon with walking, Cornetta. I don't feel like I'm getting better. Yeah, okay, so we're going to go over first the standing up. And also let me know in the comments if that is something that you are working towards, standing up with more strength and sitting down without plopping, whether that means you're sitting down without plopping on your couch, on a chair, in your car, um, on the toilet, that's a big one because those tend to be lower. Let me know if that's something that you're working on just so I can see who, again, who I'm talking to on this specific call. But let's review again before I demonstrate. Functional exercise. The definition is doing exercises to improve function. And the way that you do that is number one, as I just told you to do, number one, pick a goal that you have. Pick a function that is hard for you to do or something that you want to be easier. Once you have that thing, you're going to break that function down into as many small movements as you can. And those small movements that make up that activity or that function are now your exercises. So I'm gonna demonstrate a bunch. Um, Michael, I'd just like to stand for more than 30 seconds. That's gr a great example. Can you just stand without swaying? You guys are all on the same page. Okay, so let me back up here and I'm gonna demonstrate for you guys. And I chose these two because they're the most common ones that I hear. All right, let me make sure. Okay, I'm gonna move my chain down a little bit. Okay, that should work. All right, so if you have a goal of standing up with more strength, if you're the type of person where maybe you go to stand up and you just plop down like this, or you take several attempts and then eventually you're able to stand up, or maybe you go to sit down and it's just more about flopping back like that. And this is gonna be very important for you. So this is the activity or the function that we're working on right now. So we're gonna break this function down into as many different categories or movements as possible. And if you guys, I saw Peggy was on, if you guys have ever done my live exercise classes on Zoom, then you'll know we do a lot of these because they're very important. So. Let's pretend that you're relaxing just right now, which hopefully you are. So you're relaxing. If we want to be able to stand up, the first thing we need to do is sit up tall. I cannot stand up if my back is touching the back of the chair. So the first thing is to have the core strength to sit up tall. Now, the second thing we need to do is scoot forward. It is going to be so challenging to stand up if my butt is all the way back here. So number two is scooting. Now number three, I'm not gonna be able to get up if my feet are all the way back here. I know my feet I think I cut off for you guys, but you can tell they're all the way back here. We need to be able to straighten them a little bit. So we need to be able to straighten our knees. So let's see, I lost count. One, two, yes, yeah, so this is the third thing. Now we also wanna make sure that our knees are wide enough apart. If they're too close, it's gonna make us unbalanced. So number four, we need to make sure we have flexibility in our inner thighs. Then we need to be able to make sure we have enough front and back of our core strength to shift our body weight forward. If you can't shift your body weight forward and stay stable, you're not gonna be able to stand up or sit down with good strength. So that was number five, was getting here. Then number six is having the leg strength to push yourself up with your shoulders forward, and then you stand up. So let's review that again. So for slouching, number one, sit up tall. Number two, scoot. Number three, move our legs forward. And number four, make sure that your legs are wide enough apart. Number five, hinge. Number six, push through your legs. So that's six different things. We just broke that standing up down into six different movements. Those can be six exercises for you. So for example, exercise number one, and this is going to be different for everyone based on what your strength is like. 
exercise number one might be sitting in a slouched position and coming up top and then back down. And I can feel my core muscles tightening when I'm sitting up tall and when I'm going back down and sit up tall. So you can do this over and over again, repetitions as an exercise. Another exercise you can do is scooting. You know, so, so you get the idea, all those things, those six things that I mentioned are now the exercises that you do. The second part of this is sitting down. Most people will just kind of flop down like that because your shoulders are coming backwards too quickly. The trick to sitting down is to first hinge your hips and keep your shoulders forward the whole time as you're bending your knees. So eventually your butt is touching and your shoulders are still forward. Once your butt touches the chair, that's when you sit up. Most people plop because their shoulders come too far back too soon. So for sitting down, you need to make sure you have that strength and balance in this position. Can you hinge and transfer your weight with good strength and good balance? Similarly, can you lower with your shoulders forward with good strength and good balance? That's what's gonna help prevent you from flopping. Okay, let's see what questions we have there. It's getting warm in here now that I'm demonstrating. All right, um, let's see. Brenda, I never feel particularly stronger or weaker, but my function is not good, specifically foot drop. Linda, getting up from sitting on the floor. Yep, that's another one. Lynn, I need making my hand stronger every single day, so I write every single day. Awesome. That's per yeah, so that's Lynn, that's a great example of a functional exercise to do for your hand. If writing is hard, practice writing. I always say, anytime someone asks me, what's the best exercise I can do? I ask them the question first of, what's the what's something you're working on? What are you hoping will be easier? And whatever they say, no matter what it is, I'll say, that's your exercise. That's the best thing that you can do. So Lynn, yes, that's great. Uh, Michael says, flopping, that's me. Yep. Sandra, walking up and down stairs. Yep. Paula, why do we do that? Fall when trying to stand. So I didn't see when you asked that. Hopefully that makes sense now. The reason, mo most of the time, the reason is that your shoulders come back too quickly. Now, of course, it also has to do with core strength and balance and leg strength, but 90% of the time, it's just positional. Michael, is it okay to use arms on my chair? Absolutely, I unfortunately don't have a chair with armrests in here. I, I keep meaning to get one, um, but yes, you can absolutely use armrests. Peggy, I love all your functional exercises, makes me more motivated to do them, yes. Okay, how do you scooch off the toilet when you have your underwear and pants down? Yeah, so toilet's gonna be a little bit different only in the sense that you won't scoot as far. Like when I was using that chair, I, that width is way more than what the toilet would be. So you would still scoot forward, it just wouldn't be as much. It might only be one or two scoots instead of three or five. I didn't count exactly how many scoots I was doing there. Um, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is related to MS. Thought I was just clumsy. No, Polly, you are not. Deborah, for that last part, I walk myself up my legs with my hands. Is that okay? Oh, okay. So I think what Deborah is talking about, I'll just demonstrate my wheels chair. I think she's I think she's talking about walking yourself up like this, um, either from seated or standing. So that's fine in day-to-day -day life, but when you are strengthening, when you're focusing on strengthening, that it, you should not do that. If you're doing your exercises, don't use your arms, if possible. If it's not possible, use your arms. You know, the main thing is you want to be able to do it correctly with good quality. So do what you have to do to make that happen, but if you don't need to, make it a little bit easier, which we're going to talk about as well. Um, okay, and then what about dizziness on balance sort of thing? So that's a different topic. We will, uh, we've had a discussion on that in the past, but I can bring that back up, but um, we have a lot to go through today. So I'm not gonna touch on dizziness today. 
Uh, Stacy, I want to stand up without using my arms to assist. I like how you are instructing us to break it down into parts. Yes. Sandra, walking stride. We'll talk about that. Um, Rebecca, holy crap, the exercises are great things you can do while watching TV or basically anything throughout the day. Absolutely. I don't know um, if you guys have heard of my online MS wellness program called The Missing Link, but 90% of the exercises, if not more than that, are seated and or just things that exercises that you can do throughout the day as you're sitting on the couch, as you are um, want, reading a book, as you're watching TV, as you're on your phone, as you're um, sitting at your computer, anything, eating. And, and the reason for that is because you're in that position more. If you can do exercises, in the positions that you're in most of the day, you can exercise more often. If you're given exercises where you have to get down to the floor, how often are you gonna do those? Not often. Or exercises that you can only do lying in bed or lying on a couch, you might not do those as often and therefore you're not going to improve your function and strength as quickly. Janet says grip, I seem to be dropping things or dropping items because of my grip. Yeah, so, Anytime someone tells me they want to work on grip, I will say gripping what? You know, just the things I have in my immediate vicinity. I have my phone. I have a nice fluffy pen. I have a candle right here that kind of looks like a, um, a mug. Or actually, I also have a glass. I have a lot here. So what grip is hard for you to do? Because this is going to be way wider than this. And then this is going to be wide, but not as wide as it. So practice the exact grip that you need improvements with. Rebecca, the hardest, hardest, the hardest part for people like me is if 10 reps is good, I think 50 is better, which we all know isn't the case with MS. Absolutely. Another person working on standing, plopping. What exercise do I need to be proactive? Great question. So to be proactive, if let's say, and again, I don't know ex exactly the type of people on this call tonight, but let's say your function's pretty fine. You know, there isn't anything that you necessarily have a ton of weakness with. You're fine with your mobility. What I say to be proactive is think about the things that you absolutely want to continue doing, which is a really hard question to ask yourself. Sorry, I'm slouching in my chair. It's a really hard question to ask yourself because of course, well, you want to continue to do everything. What's really important to you? You know, and, and be proactive. I will say that the, even though everyone with MS is different, I found that as a physical therapist, there were certain exercises I was giving everyone, all of my clients with MS, whether you were diagnosed yesterday and your function was okay, or you were diagnosed for 30 years and maybe um, you spend part of your time in a scooter or a wheelchair or all of your time there. There are certain exercises that I think everyone should be doing, and there's a lot, so there's not enough time to review them tonight, but that's what's in the missing link because there's so many muscle groups that MS has a tendency to attack first, causing things like hip flexor weakness, foot drop, knee hyperextension or knee buckling. So to be proactive, think about the things that you that are most important to you. Maybe it's running, maybe it's stair climbing, walking, whatever it is, and break those things down and do them. Now, if they're too easy, add some weight, do more repetitions, hold for longer, go slower. There's lots of ways to make it more challenging. Uh, getting in and out of the tub. Debra, um, what exercise can I strengthen so that I can walk farther? So that, um, so Karen, who's asked about walking farther, that is more about in, endurance. And we had a talk, I think, last month, I think, on strength versus endurance. So for now, because we have a lot to review and lots of um, topics right now, or not topics, questions, uh, I'm going to refer you back to that. If we have time at the end, I can come back to that. My bottom is so heavy, I can't even get one side to scoot. How do I even break that down? Yeah, so if you can't scoot, then just practice weight shifting. All scooting is, 
is a series of shifting your weight this way and then being able to scoot that leg forward. Then shift your weight this way, then scoot this leg forward. And so it's your sh shift, scoot, shift, scoot. So if you can't scoot, practice weight shifting. Can you shift enough body weight over to this side of your body so that that butt cheek lifts up? And then try the same thing over this way. So break down scooting, just keep breaking it down. Um, Kanata, yes, signing up for more programs with your program. Awesome. Julio, I'm able to sit down, but I tend to use my arms and hands to make sure the chair is there. Always make sure the chair is there. Using your hands to touch it is great. Making sure the back of your legs can feel the chair behind you, great. You want to make sure that it's there and that it's sturdy and not going to fly away from you. My feet seem to be stuck to the floor, hard to move them. What should I do to get them to lift off the floor and have a normal lift of my foot? This is, um, it's really hard to say virtually what might be causing that. It definitely could be some weakness, in which case functional strengthening exercises are important. But anytime it feels like it's, it's stuck, that usually also means spasticity is playing a role. We had a whole topic, a whole presentation on spasticity as well. So I'll refer you back to that. And also talk to your neurologist about the different spasticity options for you. I like the looped device you showed on Instagram to lift your legs. Do I have that in here? Shoot, I just had it. Man. Well, yes, I, there's a device called the leg lifter on Amazon, and it looks like a long dog leash, and but it's not flimsy on the inside. There's metal the whole way around, so it stays in its shape, and it's really great for helping you lift your legs. If you guys want, I can go grab it. It's just in the other room. I can walk better than standing still. Yeah, so we've had a few people say that your goal is to stand better. The best thing to do for that is practice standing as an exercise. I have a YouTube video on this, how important standing is. If you can stand, especially if you're standing up straight, you are working all of the muscles in the body, front side, back side, and both sides, which is very important. If, if you're not working all the muscles evenly, then you're going to tip one way or the other or forward or back. So if you're standing up tall, you are working all those muscles. Even if you can only stand for 10 seconds, great. Stand for 10 seconds and then sit down and rest. Then stand back up. Can you stand for 12 seconds? Then sit down. Or maybe you can stand for one minute, but you have a goal of 10 minutes. Stand up. Stay standing for as long as you can. Ooh, Lynn says chair dancing. Yes, that's a great option. Um, there is something, oh, before we move on, next I want to show you walking, but before we do that, I did have a few people say um, getting in and out of the tub. So I, of course, don't have a tub in here, but if we can use our imagination, I'm going to try to demonstrate it. So, all right, so let's pretend um, let's see, what way do I want to? All right, I think I'm going to do it this way. So everyone's tub is going to be different, but ideally you, you have something that you can sit on, whether it's a shower chair, whether it's the edge of your tub. So you, you're going to ideally want to sit first. If not, I have another option for you. But if you think about it, let's say I'm sitting at the edge facing away from the tub. The tub is here. The water spouts might be down there. So I'm facing away. I need to get into the tub. So there's a few things that you can do. If you're sitting, the best way, I think, personally, is to straighten and hold on. You can't see my leg. Is to straighten your leg and scoot it over. So now, theoretically, you cleared the tub. So you're clearing the tub, and then you're in. Then adjust your feet, your, your butt again, then straighten, bend. The reason I like that is because this is much harder. This requires a lot of hip flexion. But if you can straighten your knee and over, we didn't use any hip flexion. So I like that option 
Now, if you don't have a place to sit in order to get into the tub, then, so let's say tub is in the same spot, tub is here. Ideally, you will have something that you can hold on to. Um, I'll just use this chair. Where does it go? Behind me. I'll just use that chair for now. But you'll have something that you can hold on to, and it, it's up, over, shift your body weight first, and up and over. So there's a lot that goes into this. In order to first lift this leg up, let me face you guys. Let's say oh, towards you right here is where this spout is. I am on this side. This is the tub. So I need to first lift this leg up to get in. In order to do that, I need to shift my weight off on this leg, then lift, then leg out, then in then shift my body weight, lift, in, down. So if weight shifting is hard for you to do, bam, there's an exercise for you to do. If marching is hard for you to do, bam, there's an exercise. If lifting your ankle is hard for you to do, that's something you should do. So again, just break it down. Michael, how do you keep proper posture while standing? I have trouble slouching one way or another, but it feels like I am standing straight. So I'll briefly touch on this, then we're gonna keep moving on because we talked about this in the strengthening section or webinar that we did. Standing up straight, so keeping good posture while standing is often one of two things. So lots of demonstrations today. So if you, feel like when you're attempting to stand, you are more like this. Then this is often a, um, an issue of low, or sorry, upper back weakness, because your, your posture is here, so your upper back is weak, the front shoulders are rounded, so that means that these pec muscles are tight, so you want to stretch those. Additionally, we're shortening these muscle groups, so it, it's a lot of weakness and uh, tightness of different muscle groups in the back and in the hips. However, if when you're standing, you look like this, this is a completely different issue. This means your back is flat. This, is, this does not indicate back weakness at all, not in the slightest. This indicates hip flexor tightness. It's pulling your hips forward and glute and hamstring weakness because if these were strong, they'd pull you up, but they're not, so they're here. So it really depends on what your quality looks like. And there's, um, you know, so for example, if it was a first, you need to work on stretching here, strengthening your upper back, stretching your uh, hip flexors. If it's the latter, it's stretching the hip flexors and strengthening the glutes and hamstrings. I know that was really, really fast. Okay, last question, then I'll get to the walking, so I know a lot of people have a question on that. Eric, I have had a hard time getting my legs up high enough to get into bed and harder to get the legs under the sheet also. Um, yeah, so you can use, Eric, I always suggest to get into bed. I suggest the same tactic that I just demonstrated when sitting and getting into the tub. So in, if you have hip flexion weakness, because you say it's hard to get your leg up high enough, straighten your knee and scoot it over. Also, I am just gonna take a quick second to go get the leg lifter because I think it'd be important to share with you guys. Um, I'm just gonna mute myself because the dogs might bark. I'll be back in 20 seconds. Okay, hopefully that was less than 20 seconds. So a few people have mentioned, or maybe just one person mentioned the leg lifter. This is what it is. I just got this on Amazon, it's $10 if you want the link. Actually, I can put the link in our Moving with MS takeaways. Um, so 
it's not very, I don't use it that often. Normally this, uh, the more you use it, the more it will go into a circular position. But as you can see, it's pretty hard to move. So there's wire throughout this whole thing. So the way that you use it is you put, you put one end down, I'm gonna show you in the lazy way. So you can use this to help you get into bed or out of bed or into a car, or into the shower. So you put this loop that's at the bottom down underneath your foot, and then you use your arms to lift your leg like that. And then, so, you know, if you're getting into a car, let's say you're sitting in the car seat, but you have to swivel around, you lift and you can put it in, let it go, come back for this foot, lift and put it in. So it's a very, very useful tool. I'll put the link in the takeaways if you guys are registered for those, then you'll get them. All right, let's go back to the presentation. So we'll talk about walking and then I'll demonstrate walking. All right. Wait for it to load. Okay, so walking. And again, if you guys are working towards improving anything with walking, quality, endurance, um, anything, any goal with walking or even stair climbing, if you guys have mentioned stair climbing, let me know in the chat. The main thing to know about walking is that, and hopefully you guys have heard me say this before, but walking is not just one big movement forward or one big movement backwards if you're taking steps backwards. Walking, is a lot of different things. Even if you look at this picture right here, zero to 60 is in stance phase, meaning there's some part of both of your feet that is on the ground. 60 to 100, so 40% of your walking is swing phase, meaning you are on one leg only. Regardless of using an assistive device or not, one leg is off of the ground. So walking is going to require balance, it requires strength, it requires endurance, it requires a lot of things. So we're going to, let me look at the next slide. Yeah, I'm gonna go back. Um, so I'm gonna demonstrate, we're gonna break it down the same way as I broke down standing up and, and sitting down. So, I got my leg lifter out of the way. Make sure that doesn't fall over. And I see some people saying, yes, that walking is something they're working on, as well as going upstairs and going downstairs. So great, this will be helpful for you. All right, so pretend I'm walking this, not pretend, I'm going to walk this way and I want you to watch this leg. So walking forward, a lot of, a lot of my clients before working with me will say that they practice walking walking is one of their biggest goal and they practice walking forward. But to make it functional, you need to break walking down and figure out which of those parts are hardest for you. So for example, let's say I'm gonna start in a staggered stance. The first thing you need to do to walk forward is shift your body weight. If I don't shift my weight forward, then when I go to pick up this leg, I'm just gonna fall backwards. So first and foremost, shift my body weight. Second, bend my knee. Third, swoop my toes up. Fourth, bring my knee up. Five, straighten my knee. Six, put my heel down. And number seven is all while that was happening, all while I was demonstrating these things, I was standing on one leg. So that's the seventh thing is single leg stance, balance. So I'm, I'll repeat those again. So. Number one, weight shift. Number two, bend your knee. Number three, swoop your toes up for heel drop. Number four, bring your knee up, so marching. Number five, straighten. Six, heel down. And seven, single leg balance, because you are standing on one leg. Now, you can use a mobility aid for this. You can have a walker in front of you or a cane or trekking poles. 
I'm demonstrating in the middle of a room. You do not need to do these in the middle of a room. Be safe, be, have things around you to help support you. And the first step is breaking it down into all those things. So check, we've done that. Now figure out which of those are hardest for you. Everyone's different. Maybe for you, um, the bending is hard and the dorsiflexion. Your marching might be okay. Your hip flexion might be okay. Well, then the bend in the ankle might be the first two exercises that you focus on. Or maybe you can bend okay, but it's, it's that marching that's really hard. So that can be the one that you focus on. Or maybe it's the, you can't see my feet down here, but maybe it's the landing with the heel, in which case you can practice that strengthening of lifting the heel up. Or maybe it's the weight shifting. Maybe that first step, you feel like you're falling quickly onto the leg because you didn't weight shift your body weight off of that leg. So those are the seven steps of walking. If all of them are hard, great, you've got seven exercises that you can do. It doesn't have to be all in one day if your body can't tolerate that, but you can do those seven exercises. So um, where did the presentation go? Here we go. So that is what walking requires. So if you have any goal of walking, improving your endurance, improving your strength, improving your balance while walking, these are the things that you need to be focusing on. Now, you might say, well, great, marching is really hard for me to do, but holy cow, when I try to do that standing, I feel like I'm going to fall over. Or bending my knee is so hard. I, I definitely need to practice that. But standing, I feel so, it's, it's so challenging or I can't lift it at all. Make the exercises work for you. So the first step, pick a function you want to improve. Second step, break it down into all those different movements. Third step, make it work for you. Marching, let's take that as an example because if you, if you guys have said you have difficulty lifting your leg. Marching. If that's hard for you to do standing, practice it sitting. If that's hard for you to do, still sit, but lean back, recline. If that's still hard for you to do, you can practice it um, laying on your back with your knees bent and feet on the floor. If that's still hard for you to do, you can lay on your side. If that's still hard for you to do, you can, you know, so keep breaking it down into all the different positions that you can do. And the idea is that you're working towards eliminating gravity. That's going to make it easier. So for example, if you're laying on your side and you're marching, meaning you're bringing your knee up towards your face, there's no gravity in that position. If you're sitting, you're lifting it up against gravity. So find a position that works for you. Maybe it's standing, maybe it's sitting, maybe it's sideline, maybe it's something else that we didn't review. Make it work for you. And that's really where physical therapist comes into play. I um, I don't know why, but I assumed that early on as a physical therapist, before I was even working with people who have MS, I just assumed that breaking down function and breaking down activities was a thing that everyone did. I don't know why, maybe that's just how my training was in PT school. And it wasn't until I started working specifically with clients who have MS that I realized that they don't know what that is. And it's really hard for people who don't have a PT background to do that on their own. So if you do have a physical therapist near you or that you can work with, they're going to be the best people to help you break down, just like I am, all your different goals. Because any goal you have that, that you guys have mentioned tonight, standing, hand stuff, shoulder stuff, like gripping, um, getting into and out of the car, getting into and out of bed, all of these things can be broken down into different exercises. And the cool thing is that there's a lot of overlap, right? Like if, if you improve hip flexion, your walking will improve, getting into and out of bed will improve, getting into and out of a car will improve. So it's not that there's vastly different exercises for each of these movements, but it's important to know which of them you should be doing based on what your goals are. Okay, so just a few slides left. Um, time check, we're good. So newest guidelines, aerobic exercise first. This primes your brain for neuroplasticity. Functional exercise, which is so important, we had an entire presentation on it. Perfect quality. We want to go for as best quality as possible, meaning 
you know, that question that I asked right in the intro, when you ask me, well, how many repetitions should I do? How many sets should I do? What I say is as many as you can with perfect quality. And for those of you that need a number, I always say shoot for 30 perfect ones, but you're shooting for high repetitions. And because we're looking for perfect quality, that also means lots of rest breaks. So with me saying 30 perfect ones, I don't mean 10 times three sets your first set might be 10 because you have good uh, energy. But then your second set, you might be fatiguing a little bit. So maybe your second set is eight because you stopped because you started to have fatigue or poor quality. So then your third set might be five, again, because you're a little bit more fatigued. So you do a fourth set, that's maybe four. And then you do a third set, that's maybe two. And sorry, not a third fifth, sixth, you get the idea. You keep doing more sets, rest breaks. So let yourself rest so that you can do as many as you can, high repetitions cumulatively with perfect quality. Additionally, this is something I've reviewed with you guys before, but it's important. So I'm gonna to wanted to review it again tonight. Distributed is equivalent to mass, meaning exercising throughout the day is distributed that is just as effective as exercising all at once. Exercising in a variable environment is better than exercising in a constant environment. Meaning when you're practicing these exercises that we're talking about, don't just practice them in the same room with the same chair every single time. Move around, practice in different rooms, practice, you know, let's use the example of standing up from a chair. Practice from lots of different chairs, practice from your couch, practice from your bed, practice from, as many surfaces and in as many rooms as possible. And lastly, random order is better than blocked. So for that standing up demonstration, I wouldn't always wanna practice sitting up first and then scooting and then bringing my legs forward and then opening them. You wanna split it up. So maybe I'll practice um, straightening and bending my knee first. Then maybe I'll practice lifting my shoulders forward. Then maybe I'll practice standing up then scooting. So you're, you're making the order randomized versus the same order every single time. Similarly, not just with functional exercise, but let's say I've broken down my exercises into five or my function into five exercises. If I always do the same one last, that one's always going to be the hardest. Switch it up. Try that one first next time. So you're switching the order. So getting access. So one thing that I always get at the end of this presentation is, how do I work with someone who knows what functional exercise is? So there's lots of different options. Option number one is in-person PT. This is a little varied now just because of COVID. Um, you can find an in-person physical therapist through the MS Society. They have a care partner. Uh, the Consortium of Multiple Sclerosis Centers, and as well as one of my favorite things to do, because I like those two options of the MS Society and the Consortium of MS Centers. However, you, at least for the MS Society, you have to apply to be a care partner with them. And their um, there might be some PTs out there that are MS certified that have not gone through that application process. So I really, I urge everyone that I work with virtually to call local clinics near you and ask them, do you have someone who's an MS specialist? Do you have someone that, that specializes or focuses on functional exercise? So calling PT clinics as well. Uh, telehealth physical therapy, which is thankfully, I'm so grateful, it is way more common nowadays, which is awesome because pre-COVID, it was so hard to get that covered by insurance, but most insurance companies do cover telehealth PT within network providers, so you can find someone via telehealth. And then the missing link, as I mentioned earlier, um, is a way to work with me and get my exercises.